Hi, I'm Margie Price, and I'm going to read a little bit from this book, The Littlest Voyager, illustrated by Cheryl Pilgrim, with permission from Holiday House Publishing, and written by me. A couple of hundred years ago, the Voyagers, often wearing red hats and bright sashes, traveled the waterways trading goods for furs. The Voyagers in my story travel all the way from Montreal to what is now Minnesota, almost all by water. All this way, 1,200 miles one way. What would happen if a little red squirrel who wanted to be a voyageur and wear a red hat and a bright sash were to stow away in their beautiful birch bark voyageur canoes? Let's find out. Chapter one. Here is the squirrel looking down on the Voyager canoe filled with eight hardy Voyagers. My wanderlust is born, 1792, Montreal. The flash of red paddles, the sound of strong singing voices. I leapt to a higher branch for a better view of the mighty Ottawa River. Canoe after canoe after canoe, a whole brigade of canoes moved along the waterway below my treetop home. Each big birch bark canoe loaded with many bundled parcels, each propelled by a crew of eight to 12 voyageurs, each voyageur paddling like mad and singing. I sang a song too. Come back, I want to go with you. No answer. I flung myself from branch to branch, trying to catch up with them. But soon there was just the sound of their song trailing behind as they paddled into the far away. Every spring, when the ice had well and truly melted, the voyagers set off from my home near Montreal in their beautiful honey-colored canoes. Where did they go? What did they do there? What did they carry away in their canoes? What did they bring back when they returned months later with the autumn wind at their backs? Sometimes on their return, I caught the scent of the far away, pine cones sticky with resin, the sweet sap of maple trees, musky mushrooms, juicy berries, a multitude of nuts and seeds yet to be tasted. It was a smell that stirred up in me, a wanderlust, a call to adventure of the grandest sort. I want to be a voyageur. I told my friends, why shouldn't I be a voyageur? Because you are a squirrel, my friends said. Because you cannot paddle a canoe. Because you cannot cook. Because at the portages you cannot carry anything. This is what I said. This is what I said to them. I may not paddle, but I can sing. I may not cook, but I can eat. I may not carry much, but I can carry something. Well, said my friends, they will never let you into their canoe. Perhaps, I agreed, but their canoes are so big. There are plenty of places to hide, and I am so small, I can fit into one of their vest pockets. And that is exactly where I was when the next brigade set off. Yes, it's true. I joined a crew of eight hardy voyageurs. Jean-Méchant, Jean-Paul, Jean-Luc, Jean-Jacques, Jean-Henri, Jean-Claude, Jean-Louis, Jean-Jean-Tille. The Jeans were not exactly aware that I had joined their team, but I planned to impress and delight them with my many talents. As soon as I was in the canoe, I slipped out of the vest pocket where I had been hiding. I stashed myself among the kegs and barrels and oil claws and many big, heavy canvas wrapped bundles. The five canoes in our brigade launched all at the same time, and everyone wanted to be the fastest. Oh, the exhilarating whoosh of the canoe surging along under the power of eight strong paddlers. Forty some paddles flashed in the sun. Who would be first? Not us. We were, in fact, last. 
perhaps with my encouragement, our canoe would soon be number one. Well, I hope you'll come back and find out whether their canoe gets to be number one and what else might happen in this long journey um, with the squirrel and the voyageurs. And uh, I really hope you'll come back because it turns out that some actual voyageurs are going to be here to, to read to you. Thanks for listening.